Our last Spider-Man video was so successful that we decided to sell out and make our entire channel nothing but Spider-Man. This is so that we can capitalize on Spider-Man's popularity and possibly make some cash because we're a bunch of greedy fucks like Sony. Without further ado, here's a review of the first Spider-Man movie. You already know who Spider-Man is. I'm not gonna explain it to you. That being said, I'm gonna talk about Spider-Man. Spider-Man's my favorite superhero tied with Batman, and I'll pretty much partake of anything that has to do with Spider-Man even the shitty Spider-Man stuff. So there's been a total of five Spider-Man movies that have come out over the past decade. The first three movies ran from 2002 to 2007. Spider-Man came out in 2002, Spider-Man came out in 2004, and Spider-Man 3 came out in 2007. The dumbass Sony was like, hey, let's do Spider-Man again, because, um, some people didn't like Spider-Man 3. So they scrapped Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 4, which I really, really would have liked to have seen, and they rebooted Spider-Man five years later with The Amazing Spider-Man. That one came out in 2012. Then they released The Amazing Spider-Man 2 in 2014. Then Marvel came to Sony and was like, hey, you aren't making Spider-Man any better, so how about we take Spider-Man back so you don't have to worry about him anymore? But since Sony are a bunch of greedy assholes, they probably said no. Marvel was probably like, okay, how about you let us make movies about Spider-Man, and since we'll be sharing the rights, you can get half of the money we make from Spider-Man stuff. So Sony heard the word money and gladly agreed to work with Marvel. So now Spider-Man is technically with Marvel and we don't have to worry about Sony rebooting Spider-Man every five years or so. The last movie Spider-Man was in was Captain America Civil War and yeah he was pretty great in it. This is my second favorite interpretation of Spider-Man in movies and I hope that Marvel keeps up with the good work. Next year we have Marvel's first standalone Spider-Man movie coming in July called Spider-Man Homecoming and it should be good at the very least or it'll suck like Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now let's talk about the first Spider-Man movie. This is pretty much the biggest superhero movie of its time. Before this, we didn't really have anything that met with the amount of hype that Spider-Man did. Maybe X-Men, but besides that, we never really had a superhero movie that gained as much hype as Spider-Man did. Spider-Man was such a universal character that people were probably drawn to this movie more than X-Men. With X-Men, there aren't really that many relatable characters. I can't relate to Wolverine for the life of me. Same goes for everybody else on the team. I can't shoot lasers out of my eyes, or teleport, or cool drinks with my breath, or read people's mind. Because if I did, everybody would be fucked. With Spider-Man, it's a little bit different. Sure, Spider-Man can accomplish impossible feats that I can't because, well, he's Spider-Man. But Peter Parker is the exact opposite. He suffers through the same problems that everybody else does every day. He's gotta make sure that he gets his rent paid on time, do his laundry, get to college on time, take care of his widowed aunt, work for the Daily Bugle, go on dates with as many assortments of girlfriends, and be Spider-Man. Basically, Peter Parker is like all of us, and that's what makes us relate to him the most. He's not some billionaire who lives the good life, or some god who's practically unbeatable. He's just a guy like you and me trying to survive in this big place we call the real world. So now that I'm done talking about the hype that surrounded this movie, let's talk about the movie itself. It's been 14 years since it came out, which begs the questions, why am I so old and has it aged well? In my humble opinion, surprisingly, I am old and it has aged well. Going into this movie again after not having seen it in a long time, I thought it was going to be a product of its time and not really be as good as I remember it. But my expectations were blown away after watching it again. This is a really great superhero movie. Not only is this a great superhero movie, it's just a great movie in general. So let's start from the top and work our way down and see just how well this movie is aged. I love the opening of this movie. Danny Elfman, who we all know did the scores for movies like Batman and Men in Black, did the score for this movie and I swear to God this guy knows how to make a definitive theme for a superhero. If he did it with Batman, why not? Spider-Man. I wish they just used the same theme for every Spider-Man movie. It's so good that hearing the theme at the end of Amazing Spider-Man makes it sound like some generic stock music. Come to think of it, I don't think Amazing Spider-Man even has a theme. Anyways, everything about this movie's opening sets you up for the ride that you're about to go on, and it's spectacular. The cast is also really good, except for James Franco, who looks and sounds like he's sleepwalking his way through the entire movie. Uh, Peter, may I introduce my father, Norman Asborn? Makes you think I would want to know that spiders can change their color to blend into their environment. Really? Yeah, it's a defense mechanism. Cool. Yeah. I like James Franco when he's trying to survive the apocalypse with his Hollywood buddies, but playing Harry Osborn just doesn't work for him. He just seems really uninterested the entire time, and I didn't really feel any emotion from him at all. With that said, the rest of the cast is still great. Tobey Maguire, even though there are thousands of memes based off his version of Peter Parker, is still really great. 
He's the best version of Spider-Man to date, and don't get me wrong, I still really like Tom Holland as Spider-Man, but I can't really relate to his Peter Parker as much now because he's a high school kid and I'm 18 years old trying to make my way through the world. I relate to Tobey Maguire a lot more in this movie since I'm currently going through the same beats that he goes through in this movie. He gets out of high school and he has to find out what to do next. I've been thinking of becoming a stripper, so yeah. Kristen Dunst is also really good as Mary Jane, even though she's not given that much to do except be saved by Spider-Man and be an emotional anchor for Peter. She still plays the part really well with what she's given. The three casting choices that I think are perfect are Willem Dafoe as Norman Osborn, Cliff Robertson as Uncle Ben, Rosemary Harris as Aunt May, and J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. The casting history for Green Goblin was kind of interesting. At one point, Nick Cage was supposed to play Norman Osborn, but that never came to fruition. Holy shit, there's people, like, playing loud-ass music in the background. What the fuck? Oh, now there's a fucking train going on in the background. Wow, thanks, Jacksonville, you fucking prick. Putting trains in the background of my recording. You fuck. We're just gonna wait this out. We're just gonna wait out the train right now. We're just gonna wait it out, you and me. I think it's gone. No, it's not gone yet. Why do trains in Jacksonville have to be so f fucking long? Alright, I think it's gone. It would have been weird anyway because he's Nick Cage, and I think if I watched that movie with Nick Cage as Norman Osborn now, I think I would be laughing more than being creeped out. I was a little drunk. Plus, I was horny. Willem Dafoe doesn't have a track record of being some guy who acts goofy in movies, so watching him in this movie genuinely creeped me out. And he plays menacing really well. I'm still scratching my head wondering why he hasn't been cast as the Joker. Fuck Jared Leto, give me Willem Dafoe. Cliff Robertson is so good as Uncle Ben. The same goes for Rosemary Harris as Aunt May. When I see these two act as these characters, it's as if they've literally leapt off the page of the comics and came to life. It's crazy how good they are. That's pretty much why Martin Sheen and Sally Field didn't really work for me in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Because I don't think there will ever be any actors who can top these two as Aunt May and Uncle Ben. So yes, Cliff Robertson and Rosemary Harris kill it as Uncle Ben and Aunt May. Now the real scene stealer in this thing is J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Holy shit, there's no wonder they haven't made a complete recast of this character yet. Because J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson. In the same way that RDJ is Tony Stark, when you see this guy play this character, you can't see anybody else playing him. I could make a rare exception for somebody like Hugh Laurie, but J.K. Simmons does the character so much justice that I'm just gonna say this. Cast J.K. Simmons as Jameson again. I don't care that I don't confuse people because casting him as J. Jonah Jameson again makes the most sense and is the right move. There are also some cool cameos in here like Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell is a god. Hail to the king, baby. And Macho Man Randy Savage is Bonesaw. And I think that's everybody from the cast that I wanted to talk about. Also, here's your new Deathstroke. Are you shitting me? There's like a plane outside flying. God damn it. There's so many things that are just distracting this recording. The screenplay was written by David Kep, and while he hasn't had the best track record in terms of writing movies, he proves to be a positive force for this movie. It's written just like a comic book, which for this particular movie works perfectly. If you watch this movie expecting some dark and gritty take on the character of Spider-Man, you're gonna be disappointed. This movie embraces the cheesiness of the original comics and sticks with it. Even though this movie is cheesy as hell, it works. It doesn't contradict the overall story and context either. The biggest theme I get from this movie is growing up and trying to find your place in the world. These themes are strengthened with Peter going through events in his life like losing a loved one, graduating high school, going to college, and becoming Spider-Man. As an 18 year old who just got out of high school, this movie spoke to me on a deeper level than I thought it would have. <laughs> yeah, a fucking superhero movie spoke to me on a deep level. I've never said that before, ever. Peter Parker is your average ordinary nerd. He goes on a school field trip to a science academy and gets bitten by a genetically modified spider. Basically, the first 30 minutes of this story is Amazing Fantasy number 15. Norman Osborn is the CEO of Oscorp, a company that specializes in the making of military products such as performance enhancers, gliders, and green ranger suits. He uses one of the untested performance enhancers and becomes the Green Goblin. 
He terrorizes and kills anything that gets in the way of what Norman wants. Along the way, we see Peter develop the relationship between his friends and family, as well as trying to maintain a stable income, get to college on time, and be Spider-Man. It's very simple, which is great. Superhero movies that try so hard to be complex end up not being very good at all. Case in point, Batman v Superman. In Batman v Superman, we see Zack Snyder trying to make a movie that tries to be way too complex than it needs to be. There's something about a bullet and Zod's body and Lex Luthor and it... It just ends up being a huge mess. Spider-Man is exactly where it needs to be. Simple, to the point, and not going in any other direction. Sometimes having a simple plot is the best thing for your movie. Why do you think Star Wars was so popular when everyone saw it for the first time? Sure, the effects for its time were amazing and nobody had seen anything like it before, but people also saw it because of how simple it was. It didn't have this complicated plot that didn't make any sense in the end. It was just a story about a farm boy wanting something more for his life. Spider-Man is just about a normal kid taking responsibility of the gift he was given. You can't really knock it for being more than that. The music is fucking awesome. Danny Elfman just knew exactly what the theme for this movie should be like. So he made the score in an interesting way where it's not bombastic like the Batman score was, but more creepy and crawly, kind of like a spider. Fuck. Anyways, the score is great, and it goes without saying that I love the opening theme and some of the other parts of the score. With all the positive things being said, there are still some problems, like James Franco, but you already knew that. The biggest one I have is I feel that Mary Jane was just kind of there and wasn't really given enough to do except be love interest for Peter and to be saved by Spider-Man twice. I also thought as if Mary Jane was just kind of shoehorned at the end so that she can be saved by Spider-Man. She just kind of feels like she's there, but besides that, I didn't really have any other problems with the movie. This movie is a lot like Superman the movie. What do I mean by that exactly? It's cheesy, but it works. It embraced the spirit of what superheroes are and what they should always be. Figures for people to look up to in a time of need. Someone who can give a helping hand when things are at their absolute worst. And Spider-Man is all about that. He saves as many people as possible and gets super bummed out when he doesn't save anyone. He's not some guy who throws the bad guy into a populated area and causes outrageous amounts of destruction when he could easily help avoid that from happening. He's always thinking about people and it's just trying to do what's right. And really, that's all I want from a superhero. I just want them to do what's right, because that's what heroes do. Take notes, you fucking hack.